If you guys Google most successful people, when did they get up? You'll be shocked what comes out. Jeff Bezos is up like 5 a.m. It's yeah. not like he switched like in a day. Oh, now yeah. I have a multi-billion dollar business. Like you have to do the reps. The best advice that I got that is from Kobe Bryant. I wake up at four, I go to the gym and I shoot for a couple hours. Then I go back and then I have my practice. Then I get some rest and then I eat, and get some sleep. And then I come back earlier. Then I shoot around before practice starts. I'm already working three hours more on reps. So now I'm already one year in. I'm so far ahead of doing these repetitions. That's what got him to accelerate to that level. Yep. I love the setup, by the way, with your fifth street. This is awesome. Thank yeah. you very well. Yeah, it's awesome. Welcome to Well Connected. I'm excited you're here. Thanks for uh, driving from Miami. Absolutely. You know, the early mornings are nice rides, right? It's oh not, yeah it's not very busy yeah no traffic no there's no need to introduce you uh nicola you're a great friend of mine you're my uh, uh partner in the, we we both uh, uh started balkan business conference yeah uh great we, we 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 coach each other we're in different businesses but you're, yeah i appreciate you man i admire what you do you're very successful you, you're a great person you're a good human you help people you connect people it's what we do and why we're here yeah uh, so thank you for being here. Likewise, Appreciate likewise. You, thanks, thanks. Again, I put my favorite suit for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. I want to copy it. I want to order the same one when I get back to Miami. <laughs> uh, so tell me, tell me a little bit about like you. You live in Miami now, but mm -hmm. how did you discover Florida, United States? How did you move here? Tell me a little bit about your background, upcoming. Yeah, I, I think the biggest reason why I came to the states was uh, because of basketball. Okay. Really. <laughs> um, Basketball and TV, it's funny, but I say this to everybody, because, you know, back then in, in Serbia, Yugoslavia, well, yes. you know, before the before the Civil War happened, you know, we would watch these shows, and there was a show that everybody watched. I don't know, the young, younger generation might not know, but the Beverly Hills, well, like the Beverly yeah. Hills 90210 show, yeah, yeah, yeah. and everybody was Brandon like, and yeah, Brandon, Elon. And, exactly, yeah. and everybody was like, you know, especially in my neighborhood, in my borough in Belgium. Brandon was playing basketball, right? Yes, they were playing yes, basketball, yeah. yes, he was playing basketball, yeah. So in my borough, in my in Belgrade, it, you know, everybody was like, "This is like, this is like the life." Like, who who doesn't want to go to like a school in Beverly Hills and play basketball, right? <laughs> so I think that idea started there, um, and then of course my basketball skills. You know, I was uh, recruited by a lot of scouts, and and then that's when I think that period when I was like in high school, there was a lot of um, movement of players from mm -hmm. Europe or to from the, the world coming to the states slowly. You know, so. That's kind of how it how it happened. I first landed in Jersey, uh, in New York. Sorry. And then from there, from Serbia, yeah. And then from there, no, I, I said sorry. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so I was gonna say, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it was interesting. It, it was a big shock. It was a big shock. But uh, and then from there, I I I I got an opportunity uh, host family because I was young. I was 16 years old. A host family, which I'm very close to today. They're like they're my American parents. They technically adopted me. Uh, oh, because crazy. I was a minor, and I moved with them in New Hampshire. So I went north to New England. That was another cultural shock to me, mm. uh, because like I, I grew up in a city, you know, big city, Belgrade, you know, going to a beautiful state like New Hampshire or Maine, where there's a lot of trees and a lot of <laughs> big houses. I was like, you know, like I felt a little bit locked, locked yeah. up. So I always wanted to go to a big city. <laughs> um, and then I played high school basketball there. I got recruited, and and I ended up in um, in a community college in Panama City, Florida. Wow. Yeah. So what happened was 1999. That's when the second war happened in Serbia, and I really wanted to go back, um, and I didn't want to stay. And your parents were back. My parents still exactly. back there. Yeah. yeah, my parents were back there, and you know there was bombs and there was crazy stuff going on, and I wanted to go back home, and and I didn't know where to go. And then the the guy or the agent that brought us over here, he brought a lot of players. Mm -hmm. He was like. You know why you want to go back you know there's a problem there's a war going on yeah why don't you go to florida and believe it or not there's a couple of your friends are in florida as well and i was like who it was like nash subotic uh uh mr manovich and a couple other guys and i was like what are they doing in florida he's like oh I, I found this nice college and they're all playing there and they're figuring out which other colleges they want to go to because you know junior college mm -hmm. is a two-year program and i was like they're there i'm like how but back then we didn't have the WhatsApps, we didn't yeah. have the Skypes, we didn't, you know, AOL just kind of came out <laughs> about, so we didn't know how to communicate. So once I heard that, I was like, 
book me on a flight. I'm going to Florida. And then as soon as I landed in Panama City, Florida, mm -hmm. um, the Panhandle area, beautiful, you know, Destin, that whole area up there, uh, I knew I wanted to stay in Florida. You fell in love like, I, I fell in love with it, and I was like, that's it. And and, I, and then I told my coach at the time, uh, Joe Pons was a coach, a very, very good coach back then. Um, I was like, whoever recruits me after here, uh, because I, put, I passed my SATs, I did all that stuff in high school, I could have left. <laughs> I was like, I want to stay in Florida. And I got a lot of scholarship offers, Boston University, Northwestern, Chicago, a lot of, a lot of great schools. But I said, you know, Florida is, is really important to me. I don't want to be freezing anymore. <laughs> and I want to be in this beautiful state. So that's how I, that's how I came to Florida. Yeah. yeah. You're blessed, man. We all are. Yeah, living yeah in absolutely. Florida. Every day, every day. And then how do you transition from basketball to uh, what you do today? Which wow. I, I didn't yeah. share with everybody. <laughs> Nico is also... He's a financial advisor, and he is my financial advisor as yeah. well, and uh, uh, very well known in the financial world. Thank you. Uh, and you have clients around the world too. Yeah, yeah. Well, when we talk on the phone, <clears throat> he'll be like, "Well, I'm going to the Bahamas," and it's like, "What are you I'm meeting a client?" So he travels. You go to. He, yeah. There is no no for answer. With <laughs> no, you. And, no. And I love that about you. Your your drive. It's amazing. Do you think that comes from basketball or? Yeah, or, it, it, it comes from basketball. It comes from being with the right mentor. Discipline, yeah. Discipline and, and you know, having a vision. So it comes with a lot of stuff, a lot mm -hmm. of planning and um, learning a lot of stuff from a lot of people throughout your life, uh, successful people. And, uh, yeah, I don't take no for an answer. I always want to... You work with some high net worth <laughs> individuals around the world. Where, yeah. Okay, it's probably fun. To, yeah, it is. It is. It, it takes a toll. You know, traveling takes a toll, but... Yep. But it's 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 fun to to see other countries and other other places and meet new people. And how did you dive in into that business? So it, it was, it's interesting. So, in my friend, who's my partner, who's the CEO of our of our firm, Nash Savadic, he, uh, me and him were in college for one year in Panama City, okay. and then he got a scholarship offer to go to Hawaii University, mm -hmm. and I got a scholarship offer to go to FIU in Miami, and we stayed in contact. And I always wanted to play pro ball after. After college, it was something that I always wanted to do. I always wanted to be, you know, have association with a professional club and get paid and and experience that from a mm -hmm. from a, because I, I devoted my whole life to basketball. So I was like, I want to I want to go pro somewhere. It doesn't matter where. Um, I tried out for Boston Celtics on a three day tryout. Got cut. <laughs> That's when I really found out that I suck at basketball. Like, I, no, I have no idea what am I doing. And so they shipped me off to Europe. But You're like, I'm just a tall guy. I'm just a tall guy. guy. There's, there's so many other better ones. Uh, but how I transitioned was is really because of my partner, Nash. He, he started working after he graduated. He finished his MBA. And then he started working for a company out of Chicago, John Hancock. You know, okay. John Hancock yep. Financial, huge company. He started working for them. And, and he, he was very successful as an advisor. Uh, he became a managing uh, partner there, a managing director. And then he was always in contact with me. You know, when I was, and I, and I signed in Greece. I went to Greece to play professional basketball in Greece. And he always called me and he was always calling me up and, hey, how's it going? How are you playing? I'm looking at your stats. Like, are you making good money? You should be saving some money. You know, you know, maybe you shouldn't do an investment account. I'm like, Nash, I just want to buy a, a Mercedes, man. Relax. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I was a young kid, what, 22, yeah. 20, 23 years old, you know, making great money in Europe, great money in Europe. Uh, but I was living always, in Greece. Yeah, too. living in Greece, you know, going to Athens every single day. But he's the one who kind of um, implanted the seeds for me about what he did. Mm -hmm. And he was like, listen, you know, you're in the sports world. There's a lot of athletes that have a lot of problems. Uh, like, and one day you'll, you know, we'll work together. And I was like, yeah, yeah, we'll see. Like they make a lot of money, but they, they, then they don't exactly, have to do it. Exactly. Yeah. And at that time, there was a couple of players that went into the NBA uh, from Eastern Europe that we knew and uh, they you know they, they made amazing contracts they were in the NBA and then after a couple of years some of them got hurt some 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 issues happened you know divorces mm -hmm. marriages you know uh, careers, fall apart, careers careers over no money hmm. so I was always fascinated and shocked at the same time of how how do athletes or how do the, how does this wealth created here uh, and then all of a sudden how you can lose it right uh if you don't plan it the right way so i was always interested in that and i was always interested in the markets and and how is just generally how is wealth built yeah um so that got me an interest with it and speaking with uh with my partner nash for years and him explaining how is the business and he was like i think it's a it's a great fit for you you should try it i mean listen you know you you know a lot of people you, you love to help people out yeah. 
and listen, if we can if we can help them grow their assets and help them protect themselves, like it's a win win situation for everybody, right? Yeah. So that's kind of how how that whole financial situation started. It was so it's mixed mix of sports and mix of of meeting also entrepreneurs. I met, met, met a lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurs through those years of playing professional basketball. Yeah. You know, there were big fans mm -hmm. that were sponsors that wanted to come to games, wanted to show support. So, you know, speaking with them and diving into their conversations of how they made it as professionals, you know, or of entrepreneurs, like what were the struggles? That always got me more and more interested in learning more about business and about wealth. The more you know about your clients, the the, the better you can help them with yes. investments yes, and, and what they do. Absolutely. And it's not that the sport, it, it, it's not that they don't have the knowledge they don't have the time because they're practicing all the time they don't have the time to educate themselves how to invest the money absolutely so that's where you come from and absolutely. so do you think a big part of your uh, clients is in the sport world or uh, as a clientele or you have diversification we have you know we have a sports and entertainment division in our firm because we come from a sports background nice. uh, the majority of the partners of our firm are are former athletes of some kind either NCAA or or overseas athletes um, so we have that we have that uh, communication with uh with athletes and it's great uh but i think the biggest the biggest portfolio of our clients are business owners entrepreneurs mm -hmm. really um but funny you say that because i think the entrepreneurs and the athletes are the same way they're they're focusing on themselves and on the business like the entrepreneur is focusing on the business mm -hmm. the athlete is focusing on themselves right on their body mm -hmm. but it's the same distraction which i would say uh, and that's why and discipline you know, and discipline yeah. exactly yeah absolutely absolutely and you know you're looking at it you know, the athlete is what, I mean, it's his body, right? He needs to have a good mind and a, yeah. and a healthy body because if you don't have a healthy body, I mean, look to what perform. happened with players, you know, Grant Hill and all these other players, how, you know, yeah. they, they had these big injuries or accidents and whatnot. And they couldn't, they couldn't go back and play anymore. Right. So I think the same thing with the business owner, business owner has a lot of, you know, risk, risks and li li liabilities that he needs to risk in order to to you know make it to become uh you know successful mm. so it's the same it's kind of like a little bit the same well how many of you guys have a life insurance nope in our 20s listen you're lucky you're sitting here with nicola because this this he can save you and i'm not i'm kidding i mean, I mean it's not like i'm not promoting him yeah. i'm just saying something that i wish i knew when i was in my 20s and i could start this you know we call it have you heard of the rockefeller system of, of you know investing and saving and and they call it the Rockefeller system, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, of life insurance, creating your own bank. See, this uh, is a thing. I have. I've, this I've is a thing that nobody that talks about, yeah, yeah. and you have to be at the right circle and the right table to to kind of learn about that. And and now you know we have Nicole. I hope you can share a little bit because I'm doing that with him, and mm -hmm. I think it's such a great benefit. Especially if I something happens to me and I cannot do what I do, I'm covered and my family is covered. Mm. Yeah. So it's very important. It's a full term. I mean, it's a probably yeah. a, a full podcast conversation, <laughs> but I think it's very important for especially younger people to start at as, as young as you can yeah. to invest in your own full term life insurance. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think that's that's one step. There's there's a lot more stuff oh, yeah. going to it, but uh, it's definitely part of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, I think you know one thing that I, if I can go back in time, you know, everybody asks you like yeah. if you go back, and I, and and I always ask that my clients, especially the you know, the ones that are a little bit older, right? I was like, if you go back in time, what would you, what would you do? do? What would you change? And, and it's always funny what, what you hear, um, the stories, but you know, for me, uh, I wish that I was just educated more on finances at a year, at a year, at a early age. They right? don't teach us that in school. They don't teach us that in no. school. And you know, it's a big, and not just here, everywhere, you know, everywhere I think in the world, because you know, if I knew 25% of the things that I know now, so I'm not telling like we should know all of it, right? No. Like 25%. When I was playing professional basketball in Greece and making the money that I was making back then, you know, and I, I don't know, have to lie, I was making what six thousand euros then when the euro well, was one point five. What you do with the money? Spend them on on calamari and and, and feta cheese, <laughs> clothes, cars, <laughs> calamari. Nobody was there to guide me, you know. Mm. But but that, yeah. you can't take that. You're living you the life. Blame, yeah, you can't blame somebody because there was nobody there. I mean, there was nobody in Greece or in my club that came to me and said hey, hey you know you need to save 25 percent you know put, buy apple stock or you know do something with it right nobody was there so yeah. no i had no guidance but hmm, buy I, apple stock that would be a nice one back then even even <laughs> there's a lot more right um but that being said i mean you look at it if i just had that educational part of saving or that 
educational part of protecting myself, I I would be in a much 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 better position, position now. Yeah. Now, I, listen, I'll take things for granted. I'm very blessed, yeah. and I'm very happy where I am now. And you know, I've got two beautiful kids, and you know, I consider myself very successful at what I do. Yep. But still, like if 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 I would have caught this up in an early stage, it would have definitely benefited me, and not just me, everybody, everybody, yep. anybody. You know, that's why you know I talk to my children on a daily basis about this stuff. You know, so I wanted to ask about this from a younger entrepreneur perspective because i think one of the things you have to learn two things in in entrepreneurship number one how to take massive risk mm -hmm. and then number two how to not let that massive risk that you take in your business life bleed over into your personal life because you the same habits you're building here can ruin your personal finances Correct, yeah. when you see entrepreneurs especially young entrepreneurs that are making money and like what is the number one thing you kind of start with them and just say hey let's like Let's start at square one. And is that a mindset that you have to ingrain into them? It's like, hey, the risk that you took in your business to get where you are is not what's going to get you to where you need to be personally, financially to, to set yeah. yourself up for a long term. Yeah, I, 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 the, the same conversation I have with everybody, it's always the same. It's, it's a great point that you bring out in question. Um, I tell them, the first thing I tell them is, I, I think we should protect what you've built up so far. Mm. And nobody wants to discuss that. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to talk about, okay, how do we grow these assets now more that you took this risk, right? How do we expand more? How do you diversify more? And that's great. That comes after. But up until now, what have you done to protect this so that this is now taken care of? So now that we can take on more risks or more liabilities or whatnot. So that's something that they are really shocked because they're like, well, everybody, you know, my banker is talking to me. They want me to give me more, more lines of credit. This guy has a great real estate investment opportunity for me. This guy has a business venture that I can buy into private equity, you know, all this great stuff. And I'm like, that's awesome. But if one of those things don't turn out good, like you said, it could wipe you or it could des destroy you on, yeah. on this, the other stuff. So it's a great thing that you build up so far and you're very successful. Let's protect that. Let's put that in place right now. And you know, that could be a lot of different different ways of protecting you know whether it's trust planning whether it's asset protection planning whether it's estate planning uh, you know partnership planning and all these different types of structures right or different types of strategies but that's that's very important very crucial mm. for for the young entrepreneur or any entrepreneur that's that's doing it you know um because you know i've 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 i have a lot of great friends and we have a lot of great contacts and they're all unique and, and successful in their own like little way, you know. But what I figured out, and, and and my partners as well in Westpac, what we figured out is, is really there's there's only a couple of ways that wealth is created, right? Um, and this is what I educate. I educate a lot of children and my my, my especially my kids and, and younger people like that are in my community, surrounded by you know our Eastern European community is, is I think like I think the biggest the biggest return that somebody can get is their business. Mm. Like that's like, there's the hands down, like, you know, the biggest return, like, and they're, they asked me like, well, why, why do you say that? I'm like, well, it's very simple. You know, let's look at, you know, 2021, uh, you know, how, how did the markets, how did the world react to COVID? Everything went up, right? But it doesn't matter how much the stock market did, the business owners that I know, they, they did doubled better. or tripled their <laughs> they revenue. Did better than, yeah. They did better, right? So like, we can't compete with them, right? So I think the number one place is the business owner, right? If somebody went to Bill Gates before his company went public and said, no, you know, Bill, you should invest in, uh, you know, this real estate or, mm -hmm. or you know, mm -hmm. do that, not in your company, like, you know, Bill, Bill would have been in his company. Right, he was, right? So, so I think the business is the number one place. The second place where I've, where I've noticed personally from my clients and speaking with, with successful people is land. You know, I think real estate and land is is that huge opportunity to, to build wealth, right? So you're talking about it's a limited number, too. limited number, right? <laughs> so you talked about Miami. We talked about Naples. Like if I were to ask you guys 15, 20 years from now, you know, before that development happened, before what was here, you know, people will probably laugh yeah. whoever bought bought it there. Like same as Wynwood in Miami. Oh, right. right? Wynwood in Miami, Design District in Miami, all these areas, Doral, even. You know, people that know Miami, Doral area. When I went to college, Doral, it was like, it was a farms. Literally, it was farms. Now, Doral is, you, you can't touch it, right? So I think land is the is the second 
place or real estate is the second place where I've seen the most wealth created. Um, and the third, the third thing that which I've realized is, is human relationship, human capital. Mm -hmm. Who knows who, mm -hmm. right? I know Blaze. Powerful. Blaze knows this guy. This guy has a great opportunity, you know, before everybody knows about it, before it's, you know, before it's out there and that's a great opportunity. So it's the human capital relationship. It's not what, what we you know, it's who you know. It's not, exactly, yeah. exactly, right? So regardless of how you build your wealth, regardless, you know, what you do, I think it's very important to protect it before you start moving on and expanding and growing more. It's very, very important to do that. There's this trend. He's taking notes. It's super yeah, cool. there's this trendy, uh, it's funny because it, 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 people in their 20s, it's very trendy, passive income. And yeah. everybody wants to talk about how do we build passive income and how do we build wealth through passive income. And I think it's funny because what you just said and what every mentor that's ever told me is the investment that will do the best, no matter what, that will outperform every, anything else that you do is what you own and operate. It's just yeah. the truth. It's Absolutely. what will grow the most. And one yeah. of the things that I've learned a lot from Blaze is focus. If you just focus on doing what you do and being a superhero in what you yeah. do, that that will help transform you into be you know, you'll you'll be able to grow and you'll be able to build wealth. But my question, especially transitioning out of basketball, how did you take your work ethic and what you <clears> did and build it in as a competitive advantage in the financial advisor world? Um, it, it starts with what Blaze said. It's the discipline. I think it's. I think playing any type of sport or being active, you have to hold, your, hold yourself very accountable, right? I am the type of person that I I love team sports. Like I tried tennis as a kid. Uh, you know what else is out there? You know, like probably tennis ping, only ping, ping pong, ping pong, <laughs> right, or something. I, I was never a single sport guy, right? So I always wanted to have a team. Mm. Always wanted to somebody have my back, whether it's handball, you know, basketball, soccer. So I was more of a team sport. There's a joke in my neighborhood. They say, you know, it's not considered a sport if it doesn't have a foul. <laughs> right? So if it's if, it, yeah. if there's no foul, you know, like, oh, he fouled me. It's not a sport, right? I'm just joking. But I love I love my tennis guys. And, uh, but yeah, I, it, it, came, it came with that, right? Um, and that was really embedded in my in my mind. Like, if you want to make it you have to put in the work right now how do you put in the work repetition mm. so repetition is the key to everything right if you do enough reps of or enough man hours of something you will then master it and then that is what's going to get you into that mode of really you know becoming successful or whatever you do right you sitting at the couch and not practicing or you know doing something else and thinking that you're just going to get passive income it's not going to it's not going to lead you to anywhere right you have to work it yourself i think a lot uh, that's why i get up really early you know a lot of my friends they joke like tomorrow i have a 6 a.m workout with my trainer right i'm 6 a.m still a.m yeah. i'm doing i'm doing mix i'm boxing and, and doing uh doing uh the weights wait yeah. but we're doing more like cables and stuff like that not, not, not heavy weights i'm getting old man I can't do <laughs> <heavy weights. laughs> um but you know, like tomorrow, like I have an 8 a.m. very important 8 a.m. Uh, conference call. But I'm I'm gonna be sharp. I'm I'm ready. Yeah. And you know, six to seven, boom, I'm in the sauna. Take a quick shower into my office, and now I can proper the practice day. leads to a perfect performance. Correct. Yes, but it's repetition, right? Yeah. I, I had I had to push myself every day and held myself accountable like I want to do the 6 a.m. Mm. The 6 a.m. actually came from Mark Wahlberg. We, yeah. we, talk, we spoke about that. Remember, like, yeah. he has, like, a 5 a.m. or 5 4 a.m. Yeah. 5 a.m. club. And, and I was like, you know, I was like, how is Mark Wahlberg and all these guys up at 5 a.m. where they have so much passive income? Mm. Right? Yeah. Dude, Mark Wahlberg doesn't have to work, you know. And their, their schedule, their, their 24 hours are probably busier than ours. Yeah. So I always, like, you know, I hate to complain, but I and I never do, but I always – compare myself to somebody who is a higher achiever and if in any day of in any time of the day if i think about oh i'm too busy i cannot do this i just like that guy is doing it like what's wrong with you you gotta you can manage your schedule yeah, absolutely. So I think that time management absolutely. comes with practice too so you no can... absolutely it does and i mean if you guys google like i'm serious and and i always ask this people like google like most most successful people when did they get up mm -hmm. you'll be shocked what comes out yeah like like zuckerberg you know, if you're a fan or not, like he's up like four. Jeff Bezos is up like at five, five a.m. You know, we're talking about like people who don't have to work a day in their life anymore can just live off of dividends or whatever, right? And it's like because they're not doing it for the money. 
Exactly. Because yeah, they're not. The Zuckerberg is excited because he knows he's doing something for like it's a historical thing he's doing. Right. So he's probably he's not even sleeping. Correct. <laughs> you know, what I mean? like he was a Musk. Yeah. Also, before mm -hmm. he yeah. became Zuckerberg, is, before yeah. he he was up at five a.m. It's yeah. not like he switched like in a day. Oh, now yeah. I have a you know multi billion dollar business. Like so, I think you have to do the reps. You know, the repetitions. You have to do that. That's what's going to get you into that position where you now can excel, right? And the best advice that I got that is from Kobe Bryant, which I was, you know, the, you know, the late Kobe Bryant, which we we spoke yeah. about and how, you know, it was an idol. Mamba mentality. Mamba mentality is like, and he said it best in one of his videos, and he was like, you know, I wake up at four, I go to the gym and I shoot for a couple hours, then I go back and then I have my practice, you know, with the team, then I get some rest and then I, you know, eat and get some sleep. And then, then I come back earlier. Then I shoot around before practice starts. And then he broke it down. He said, I'm already working three hours more on reps with other, any, any other NBA guy out there. So now I'm already one year in. Mm -hmm. I'm so far ahead, yeah. Yeah. right, of doing these repetitions. And, you know, and it wasn't like he was doing like some special training. No, he was probably just shooting regular free throws or, you know, like, he, but he was putting in those reps. And that's what got him. That's what got him to accelerate, you know, to that level. Then, like, I think Bruce Lee. I don't know if it's Kobe. I think it's Bruce Lee. Like the Bruce Lee said, uh, a guy who does a thousand punches, one one single punch, thousand time, it's stronger than the guy who does thousand different punches, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. one time at a time. It's just yeah. like you, yeah. you practice one thing, you become the master at it. Yeah. When that perfect time arrives, yeah, you're shining and you, you're ready to go. So Absolutely. it's perfect. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Compound interest. And it's going to happen. Yeah. And then it feels like a miracle. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. nobody, for everybody else, so, oh, oh, that's a miracle. How did that happen? How about you know, <laughs> that? That's five How years I was grinding. <laughs> Nobody's was watching me waking up at 4.15. There's a, there's a, we talked about this yesterday, but we talk about it all the time. And it's process over, being process oriented over outcome oriented. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's one of the things that plagues a lot of, you know, people in their 20s is they're, outcome oriented how can i make money how can i do this how can i do this and what i've recognized through interviewing people like you and just being around the people that i've been lucky to be around is that no matter if you have millions of dollars coming in during a day or 10 bucks to your name your process it's why zuckerberg wakes up at four o'clock today yeah. because the process is what got him in the position he is now mm -hmm. and in a lot of ways, all we can do, that's all we have. It's our process. It's our 24 hours. Oh, yeah. What have you integrated into your process, you know, since your basketball days that has really taken your career to the next level? Um, a lot of things, right? Um, I, I looked at, you know, well, first of all, our firm, we're very big on culture. So we start with culture first, right? Um, and, you know, our, my partner, the CEO Nash, he's, he's extremely big on culture and and character, right? So we have we, we're looking for always character. We're not looking for even in clients. I'll be honest with you. When I speak with people, I'm looking at a client, and great that he's successful or she. But if, you don't if they don't have that character, if they're not, you know, if I see that they're, you know, they're a little bit, I don't want to say different, you know, not that word, but some something that's not fitting in our in our cultural or in our character you know, interview, I, I, like we can't work out. And that's normal, right? Nobody, nobody can work with everybody, yeah. right? But, you know, we really, we really designed a process with our firm for clients and for ourselves, for advisors, right? Um, that process really came by me looking at more successful advisors when I started the business about 14 years ago and looking at their processes and what they were doing. Mm. So I was always looking and learning from other advisors that were much older, much into it, more have more hours of working than I did. So I, always, I would tweak it a little bit, right? I would take a little bit from this guy, and then I would take a little bit from this advisor or this senior partner, and then and I would kind of mold myself into my, or make myself my own process, right? Mm. Because I would see the issues that they were facing and the successful stuff that they were doing, and then I would try to see if that could fit in with me, right? Now, <clears throat> I, I'm a big believer that you have to mold yourself, that, you know, you just can't, we're not a copy-paste, no. you know. Uh, never stay the never same. Never stay the same, exactly. Uh, so I, I really learned from other 
top advisors, my mentor, my partner, like Nash, I learned from him and saw saw that and kind of made my own process. Now, does it have the same beliefs as my firm does and other people in our firm, other senior partners? Yes, absolutely. But everybody's a little bit different, right? Mm. Everybody does maybe things differently. Um, you know, for instance, I, I, I don't spend that much time in the office. Like people, people look at that like, you know, how, how is the that more possible? time you spend in the office, the less money you make. You got to be out of the office. <laughs> you got to be out of the office. Right. And it's so hard because, you know, when I started in the business, I was doing cold calling, mm. you know, and I'll never forget that. I was cold calling people yeah. with, a with another junior advisor because I was a junior advisor at the time. His name was Ray and Ray was fluent in Spanish. And I was fluent in English. So whoever, we, if I would get on a call, this person doesn't know how to speak English, I would give them to Ray. <laughs> and if Ray got somebody who spoke good English, he'd give them to me, right? But I was cold calling for like months and months and months and it wasn't doing anything. And then my partner calls me, he was at Hawaii and he was like, where are you? It was like a Friday. And I was like, in the office. I was like in the office. He's like, you need to get out of the office now. I was like, why? I, I, I can't find anybody. I can't find clients. He's like, you are six nine. <laughs> they're not in your office. They're not in the office. Like, you know, you need to get out of the get out of the office, right? People so, will pee on the street. You're sick. <laughs> so it was just, it was hilarious. Um, but that but it's so true though. It is so true. We're it is so laughing, true. But that's right? true. We talk so, about it all the time. Yeah, but it, you know, in the beginning, you have to do that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, at, at this point in my practice, I have a team of people around me uh, where I can be, you know seeing people meeting people discussing people going over their accounts with them in person or in zoom call somebody from a zoom call right but i'm i'm i molded myself really to that type of advisor approach where i really want to be face to face with people like that and that shows i think a big seriousness right like i like for instance i have to go to you know uh new york next week uh to meet a person which i never met and i don't know if business is gonna go you know, if we're, if we're going to do any business or not, but I'm going to fly to New York mm -hmm. and I'm going to sit down with them I'm going to shake his hand and I'm going to tell him like, listen, you know, this is who I am. This is what we do. And, you know, thanks for the introduction through so-and-so, but this is how serious we are when I'm going to go to New York and meet you in person instead of picking up a phone call and telling you what we do over the phone. You move a lot. Right. Brother. I know you do. So, yeah, so, so that's uh, up in the air. Always up in the air. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's really how, how my process is. How know? many financial guys you guys know they're going to, get in a plane and come meet you as a client yeah. they only they call you on the phone somebody from wells fargo you don't even know who it's true who, yeah, it's true yeah. you know, it's, never trust your money with somebody on the phone you don't know who they are that, meet them in person but what you're talking about is a super interesting concept that is lost again on most people <laughs> trying to build businesses in their 20s is they try to the my favorite quote by uh the founder of airbnb is do the unscalable do the unscalable and yeah. do the unscalable yeah. and and don't think about how are you going to make this scalable? Like in our business, it's the same exact thing. It's yeah. continue to do the unscalable because somehow, some way, you're going to make it work. Yeah. And you're going to be able to take that process and make it scalable so that you can continue to do what you need to do. But so many people want to get out of the flying to New York. They want to streamline processes. They want to yeah. make things efficient. It I, From at least what I've seen from the relationship that I've had with Blaze is that's not going to work. It's yeah. just, it's not going to, or it's not going to bode long-term success because everybody can be a one-hit wonder. Yeah. And that was going to be my next question. It's like you've been in the industry for at least 15 to 20 years. Yeah. How does one prepare for a 15-year run, especially in something that is so volatile like the financial um, markets? Um, I, planning. Mm. It, it starts with planning. Like we do, we do our planning uh not uh, December. I would say we're doing our planning somewhere in uh, probably end of summer, so, August, 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 September for the next for year. next year. Yeah. Like my partner doesn't joke around. He's like, yeah. listen, you I'm already know how I'm coming to Miami. Fourth quarter is going to yeah, look like. like fourth quarter. Like we know what's going to happen. Yeah, I'm coming to Miami. We're sitting down. We're going in our planning book, and he's not just going to me. He's going to all the other partners all over the country. You know, great and idea, that, and that's the thing. So we plan it out ahead year. Um, <clears throat> not in Christmas week. Not in Christmas week, right? <laughs> because clients call us for last last minute things yeah. at the end of the year, which I'm trying to tell them like this is not this is not how it works, right? Which is I try to accommodate everybody, but it's sometimes it's it's really difficult. But we have a plan and we have our expectations and we have what are we going to do? You know how much 
are we going to invest in ourselves? Because, you know, I, I invest like yourself, like everybody. You need to reinvest back into your business. And who is your business? It's yourself, yeah. right? You reinvested back into your business so much. Yeah. Into yourself. I mean, look I when do. you started. You still yeah. do every day, right? So there's a budget for that. There's planning for that. You know, what are the mar- what are the new markets that we're going to look tap into? You know, what are the... When I say markets, those are like, those are people in the same industry, right? Are they, whether they're going to be doctors, whether they're going to be lawyers, whether they're going to be CPAs, whether they're going to be athletes, right? So we have a full plan. And then we have a game of action. I mean, a set, set game of action or what's going to happen quarter one, quarter two, quarter three. And, uh, and we're planned out. Like, I know where my vacation is already for next year. And, you know, yeah. people are people looking at me like, you're crazy. I'm like, no, like, I'm going to mm-hmm. be in Europe from July 27th so like August 10th and you know this is where I, they're like that's so far out I'm like yeah but I'm planning for it I'm prepping did you bought that big ass calendar from uh, Jesse Itzler what'd you say Jesse Itzler has this big ass calendar oh no I didn't meet Jesse yeah. Yeah, yeah I met Jesse great guy you did? Yeah. yeah great guy I love great Jesse guy. Yeah. great guy no I, I know the calendar I didn't I didn't yeah, yeah. I didn't buy it but we uh, use it it's oh great. it's awesome great. Yeah, Jesse it's is, awesome. Jesse's a man Jesse's a man he came to our company and gave a present uh, like a speech mm-hmm. Uh, a couple of years ago, real nice guy, real nice guy. Um, but yeah, if you if you do the planning the right way, um, you, you know, then unexpected if unexpected things happen, then you won't be surprised, right? That's 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 that, that's our whole our whole motto is like, listen, if I if I plan for the worst mm. and something like that happens, mm. like a market corrects itself or something happens, you know, with you know with the economic situation worldwide, like we won't be pleasant, we won't be surprised, really, and that's. That's where that's where we really how we manage that because we don't know what's gonna happen. Nobody knows. I know you don't have like, a crystal ball. No, right? exactly. can't predict Nobody Nobody has a crystal ball. Nobody knows. You know, elections coming up. What's gonna? Nobody that's knows. what I was gonna yeah. ask you. Nobody knows what's gonna happen. But if you prepare, you know, if you if you if you do the right strategies, if you if you if you're very efficient on your taxes, if you're very efficient or liquid with your money, you know, you you know you you're in a better position than somebody else. You know. Mm. Like 2008, everybody was talking about 2008, like how the people lose so much money. Well, you, you got to remember, every, in two, uh, 2008, a lot of people had a lot of money in their f- retirement accounts. That's when the 401ks were up and running. So everybody was dumping these, everything that they had in the 401ks, they were dumping money into, you know, these other funds and whatnot. And, and you know, when you have all your money tied up in one thing and something happens, you're exposed to much more risk, mm. you know? Uh, you know, when, but when you have five things going on for you, five different strategies, five different, uh, I would say goals, mm-hmm. then if something happens, guess what? Something is going to go down, but something is going to go up. The other three is you'll be up, able yeah. to, to balance it out. And that's where diversification comes in. Yeah. That's a different story. But, you know, that's planning is very important. And that's what we do for our clients. <clears throat> and I'm not here to promote myself or to practice. But in general, if, you, if, you're, if you're very serious about your business and very serious about you, growing uh you know and becoming wealthy like you have to plan everything a year in advance right Mm. you have to know your budgets you have to do the research you have to take in consideration if this month is going to be bad you know like we we speak a lot with uh with the trucking industry we have a lot of right clients that are in the trucking industry and i always ask them this i was like what's a good what's like do you guys have like a bad month bad month really and then someone was like uh no i don't have it and then some of them were like yeah yeah like you know like like january february are like the worst months or like somebody tell you somebody tells me like may is like a worth month and i'm like that's interesting like why isn't everybody telling me that may is a worth worst month Mm -hmm. and they're like i don't know but you know for us like i know now like i i need to like double the work i need to find more whatever drivers or something right for may or more trucks because i need to build make up for that Right, so those those are the ones that are really successful. Mm. Those are the ones that are gonna always thrive and grow because they plan it. They right? know what's they happening. They know exactly. What's happen. Exactly. You can almost predict which month's gonna be better than the other one, so you can exactly do things to you know help exactly the business grow. Yeah, they're saying that twenty twenty four is the year of chaos. <laughs> that's what that's what everybody is uh, dubbing this year. What is what are you guys? Obviously, you don't know what's going to happen. What are you guys, what's your worst case scenario for this year in terms of like, what do you look at and say like, this is worst case scenario. This is what we're prepped for, you know, and obviously you hope, you hope that that doesn't happen. Yeah. Uh, It's a great question. And I get it asked all the time. 
Um, I, I think what this year is we have, I think everybody in general, we just have to be very conscious of what's going on, number one. And I think that people should be, people should really, really, really not, I don't want to say follow the news that much, but we, the, we shouldn't be put in a position to make um, ex explosive decisions about anything, right? Because there's so much things that need to happen still this year that haven't happened in order for to do that. But with us, it's we're we're always going to be in a position of we have this for this type of situation and we have this for a different type of situation, right? So with any of my clients or with anybody that I'm speaking, I'm always telling them, we're not going into this with one strategy. We're going into this with five strategies mm. because I really don't know what is going to happen. Mm. But I will tell you this. If one thing goes up, the other thing goes down and, and vice versa, right? Uh, so if you were put in that type of situation, then it's much, much easier for us to now make adjustments if things really go chaotic, right? If things really go chaotic, right? If, you know, <clears throat> if we know scenario a is going to happen right uh the markets are falling down or what, what are we going to do right if if you know if interest rates keep rising up what are we going to do right so we have we have always different scenarios and, and different approaches to things but it starts with really establishing much more than one strategy or even two it's really that's that's what's really gonna you know buffer that those issues well if the market corrects or we like to say if the market goes down, right? It's when you know, it's when you buy. And a lot of our clients, and I think a lot of your clients are, they should not panic because that creates an opportunity for them because they're already wealthy. They have the money. If it goes down, buy more. Just buy yeah. more. And I, I think I, I will never sell. <laughs> Even if, I mean, seriously, yeah. we talk about this all the time. Yeah. Like, why would you? First of all, don't put some money in the stock market if that's your only money you have. Mm. And if it goes down, you're going to panic. You're going to take the money out. That's it. You're never going yeah. to recover. But, you know, if you have 20% of your money and you can afford to lose that, put it in the stock market. Absolutely. And then, you know, if it goes down, buy some more and don't panic. I mean, yeah. that's simple as I can, I guess, understand it. And that's no. how I'm doing it. No, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I know it's more complicated than that and the no, way no, you guys yeah. up your things, but yeah. uh, don't sell. I don't know. For 20-year-olds <laughs> that don't aren't lucky enough to have a financial advisor like you, especially in this year of chaos, what are the number, like very simple, what are the things that they should look at in terms of whether it's S&P, what like just simple numbers that will tell them not maybe the whole picture, but just some version of the picture yeah. of what's going on. I think for anybody that's young and starting, well, it doesn't matter young, but let's just, just you said somebody that's young. Um, I think you should have three, three buckets or like three strategies. Okay. You have a, a reserve, which, which we call like a cash flow reserve bucket, where I believe that you should have at least three to six months of your, of your household expenses or, you know, your, or, or your salary inflow, right? Or your earnings inflow into that bucket. And that bucket should be somewhere safe, like, you know, yeah. whether it's, you know, treasuries, whatever, something, something safe, right? Um, then you should have something that is maybe a midterm bucket, Maybe like uh, I would say maybe a one to five year play to do something with that, and then you should have a third bucket that that is somewhere for much much more longer, right? Something that's like ten years out, fifteen years out, right? So first establishing that, and then establishing I think a systematic way of saving because people don't save enough. They don't know how to. They, they exactly like they. People, there's, there's, if you Google this, like it'll just they like, overspend. They spend more than they can afford. They, what <laughs> they whatever they yeah. do, they don't save enough, right? Yeah. But it, it, and it's, it's like how, how do you save? Well, okay, well, you know, we we take a look at your cash flow, like do a budget. Like you know, how many times I've spoken with doctors and with you know successful people, I'm like, I was like, what is your budget? He, they go, I have, we have, I have no idea. And I'm like, wow, I was like, you're missing out on that cash flow analysis mm -hmm. and that's what we do we know we do we do cash flow analysis we do asset asset analysis liability analysis protection analysis so those are things that we do even though you know we don't get compensated for it. but it's yeah. important that a client knows hey this is how much money is going there and they're like you know i had one client 
that uh, that he was just like Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. Like it was like thousands and thousands of dollars on Amazon. And I was like, do you know that you're spending X amount of money on Amazon? He goes, oh, I didn't know. That was like my daughter, you know, like on the account. And it was like thousands of dollars. I mean, he's not going to get mad at her, but he was just going to be like, hey, what's going on? You know, like use the corporate card or something <laughs> like that, right? Instead of, yeah, but business. what I'm saying is like that. So, so establishing those strategies, right? For the short term, midterm and the long term, and then saving, figuring out how your cash flow is most efficient and then directing it into those buckets. That is the, I think would be the biggest start, right? Because number one, we've eliminated the fear of not having money in a reserve. That's the number one problem, right? So, Hey, if something happens, you know, I don't get this job. I don't get this commission. If I'm in a commission based business, like at least I have three to six months of now money, which I can, you know, continue to work. And then I'm, you know, I'll, I'll receive that income. Right. And then the second thing, the second bucket is, is right there for you to kind of save, but it's in, in a, in a, in a plan. I usually call those plans, real estate plans. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, somebody like a young couple that comes to me and says, you know, they just got out of medical school. Um, they want to become doctors already. Like, you know, and then I was like, they want to buy a house, right? First thing, I'm like, great. It's, it's a five year plan. Like, let's let's save five years. You know, let's let's not rush into it. Save five years. I'll put you in contact with the right people. You know, and then you know we we'll save there. And the third bucket is for something something further down the road. Because if we don't if we don't uh, approach those three things, we're gonna miss out on time. Time is gonna go by so quickly that by the time if we don't do those three strategies or those three principles so the save start the better yeah. the, exactly because you know i mean the biggest the most most expensive asset that we have is time Sam. you ask any any anybody any, any most successful person if i can give you five years yeah. more or 10 years back to go you know how much he would give you everything time is the ultimate time, winner, exactly yeah. so if you start right at the right time you know just start and just save and and you know save saving is saving is very very important you know, eventually that opportunity is going to show up. And then exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. See, all of these podcasts we've, been, we've done so far, nobody, none of our guests ever said, this is the fastest way. It's, it's not such thing. There's no such thing as fast. <laughs> way. Time, you got to mm. put the hours and, and do you the work. Put the hours, yeah. You what do you do for it. fun? What do you do when you're not working? Uh, I do a lot of sports. I do a lot <laughs> of sports activities. I uh, go to heat games. I I play paddle tennis now, which is like a very big thing in Miami. In Miami right? Yeah, like, huge like thing in Miami. Pickleball is here. Oh, okay, pickleball. I didn't know. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I do paddle tennis with uh, with a lot of my friends. Um, I like I like to you know read a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I do cooking. I cook a lot. I like to cook. Of course, um, from the Balkans. Yeah, from the Balkans. Yeah, <laughs> um, and you know, I I, I I generally like to be outside and spending quality time with people, meeting new people. Yeah. Like regardless, it doesn't have to be business related, really. I just like, you know, learning stuff and, you know, it, it's just like, it's so, it's so interesting, fascinating in this beautiful country here that, you know, we have people from all over the world that you yeah. can learn so many cool things and, you know, you can, you know, talk to them about so many things that you don't, you never, you never, never thought about. Right. Yeah. So, so in my free time, you know, of course I spend time with my kids. That's most, that's most important to me thing. I have two beautiful kids and, you know, spend quality time with them as much as I can and, you know, Take them to see museums. You guys want to spend the weekend in Naples? Yeah, we're gonna. Right yeah, there. we're gonna. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. We're looking forward to it. Um, nice. But uh, you know, that's that's really my spare time. Spare time, what I do. I'm never, I'm never home sitting and watching Netflix all day. We well, love cigars. You smoke cigars. I know you don't. Cigars. Like this. Smoke the cigars. Yeah. You know, I don't watch the news that much. Uh, no. Watch some sports games. Love sports. Love watching football. What well, now? Yeah. You know. Speaking on that actual that actual point, because. There's a lack of trust in mainstream media, and you literally just sat here and said, "I don't, watch don't listen to the news." That basically, like in terms of not to make overreactive decisions, where do you get your information from? That's great. That's a great question, and you hit it right on the nail. I'm, um, I want to say you watch the news because it's important to see what's kind of going on, right? Or just to get at least some information of what do these people think or you know what are the analysts saying or what are the general economic overview or what is you know all these news channels broadcasting about the wars and about the issues in in, in the country and whatnot uh, i look at statistics hmm. you know i look at statistics you look at the numbers yeah. you know i look at i look at statistics i look at numbers and i look at actual data that has been in place up until now 
you know, mm. it's a thing that we do with our, with our clients is, you know, uh, when we talk about investments a lot and stuff like that, I, I take them back to like 1974 data. You know, like, you know, data before even me and Blaze were born. You yeah. guys are young, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, 1974 data, and I'm like, do you know what happened in 1974? Like, let's start there. And like, and we just like kind of skim through the years. We talk about everything. We talk about inflation, mortgage rates. People don't realize 1980s, 1980s with 20% yeah. were interest mortgages rate. and interest rates. And now we're talking about we're in and a high interest rate. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. 2008, we were... At a 6.5, 6.5 interest rate environment, right? And everybody was buying. And everybody was buying, right? So so I, I look at the data, people I look forget. at the statistics, yeah, right? People forget. That's yeah, what people forget. Exactly. exactly. People forget. I mean, listen, this is the strongest country in the world. This is the biggest economy. Hmm. Like, I don't think it's going to... We're not going anywhere. It's going to like... It, even if it falls now, like we did a couple of years ago, we, we have these correction years of, you know, economic crisis and situations, but... It's going up, like it's going to grow. It's like, it's like we're, it's like real estate. We talk yeah. about this all the time. Like it's, it's like it's going to go up. It's, it's, it's a, like the, like real estate market in New York. I always talk about that. Like when has it been like at a low, low, low numbers? Never. Like never, right? So that, so that's where the statistics and the data comes in, mm -hmm. right? So when I look at stuff, I look at statistics and data. We analyze that a lot. And then based on the information from analysts, based on the information from the what's kind of going on in the news, like the Davos, you know, summit yeah. that happened, you know, data That's from that cool. stuff, right? Like what's going on with the AI stuff, what's going on? Like, you know, we kind of put together our own, um, you know, way of decoding that and, and, and seeing what, uh, what, what, we think it, what we think is good. But it, it boils down to the core beliefs. My core beliefs is that, is that, you know, if, you save if you protect what you build up so far right and if you analyze data like you're going to be in a much much better position than trying to like you know guess of what's going to happen when and and whatnot you know i think it puts you in a much much more better position to react quicker mm -hmm. and, and and to make sure that you know you're covered you're you're protected in a much more better way you know that's, that's what it is that's what it is i love that that's a that's a great answer honestly. it's really good yeah where can we find the data for guys like just like us? Like if we wanted to go start like digging through this and, and really um, start a self-education. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think <clears throat> any financial advisor that, that is acting as a fiduciary, I think he should, you know, first start educating, you know, speaking with the financial advisor so he can educate um, the person of what's kind of going on or what is the philosophy behind um the you know the the practice of that of that advisor uh but there's a lot of great data uh they, there's a lot of there's a lot of good stuff i mean do you think there, people should but... try to find their own data i i honestly believe that people should hire a professional hire yeah, yeah even if you're in your 20s hire somebody don't think i mean you're going to spend more energy and and time yeah. to trying to learn so yeah yeah something that's you know i was going to say that professional like, yeah. somebody yeah if, doing you, it if you go yeah if you go that you know, there's so much information out there, right? That's yeah. that's misleading in so many, yeah. so many different things, right? So, and you know, I think you should talk to not just one advisor, but a couple of a couple of advisors. You know, maybe, uh, you know, this because everybody is everybody's different. Everybody has their own, you know, uh, and then see whoever you you kind of fit with, you know, who kind of fits your mold. You watch right? the news, you're misinformed. You don't watch the news, you're uninformed. So you yeah. gotta you take a little bit, but don't don't fit into it. Exactly, it's exactly. But I mean, like I said, we're I, my practice itself is really like, I, I love to bring the data and I love to bring that information to the client. I think the more, the more I educate clients, then the easier for them it is to make any type of financial decision. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, really, they do, right? Yes, they, they do. They do the exactly. decision. They do the decision. Yeah. Exactly. Just provide the information. I, I think, you know, the, the, the answer to what I do is, and I get this asked all the time, what do I do? I think I just put people in a much, much better position to make a smart financial decision. That's what it That's is. That's it. They like, I have no, yeah, yeah, I have no crystal ball. You have no crystal ball. We don't know what's going to happen. But if, if I educate you enough on, you know, asset protection, taxes, estate planning, all this stuff, right? You'll make a better decision and then you'll know, you know, how to take that and now run with it. Wait, go, to go back to you know? Jamie's question earlier, you know what? I don't yeah. really, I don't buy into that fear factor. 
I think they do it in pur- like there's purpose behind it too, and fear sells. Yeah. So I don't I don't think the market's gonna even if it corrects a little bit. I'm really that guy who always believes in that the the better things will happen rather than the worst things. Yeah. So I I always look at the bright side than the negative. You know I'm ready I'm protected as you yeah, said for yeah. if really something happens. Uh, but I always think that the better the better side will win and and the better things will happen. So I I think the market's gonna go up and I you know. And, and the economy is going to get better and all this world is going to end. Yeah. So that's what I'm creating in my head. And when you sit with people and everybody talks negative, that negative energy vibrates. But if yeah. you really focus on what good you, can you do as a human, and then that grows as a better way, yeah. I think that's going to stop Absolutely. the negativity. Absolutely. Somebody said that I think is like be very fearful when everybody is talking about something yeah. the same, but then be very proactive when everybody but is running away from something. Yeah. You know, mm, so it's like it's powerful. It's like you know, like when 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 people are running away from something, that's when that's when I think people should be like, well, you know, what's going on? Mm-hmm. Why why is everybody not running away from yeah. this? Let's go, let's go Where's explore it? that, right? <laughs> and then at the same time, when everybody is, you know, talking about something, something, you know, that everybody's like, oh, this is the best, this is the best, this is the, you know, easy way, this is the passive way of doing things. Like <laughs> that's when you have to be very fearful. Mm-hmm. You know, don't don't fear that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. It's um, it's 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 really you know I, I everybody has a an opportunity here, you know, whether you're born here or come to this country like like me and Blaze did, and I think that it, with that educational piece and you if you surround yourself with, with uh, the right with, people with the right people and the people that want, want good for you, yeah, you know, like I think it's very important that you surround yourself like, like a very very successful client of mine I don't want any names but a very successful client of mine from Miami told me he says listen. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. I love that. You know, Boom. yeah. He goes, he goes, it's very simple. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're sitting around with the guys in the coffee place for four hours a day that don't have a vision, that just talking about, oh, I wish I have that Rolls Royce, I wish I had that private airplane. And look like, at that guy. Like, I'm gonna show this. you your future. <clears throat> you're gonna be at that coffee place in five years from now. Nothing's gonna change, right? So we're creatures of habit and it's hard, you know, it's 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 so easy to to understand that yeah. and just to do it and change but a lot of people don't do it because we're creatures of habit oh i like sitting in the coffee shop for three hours you know i like watching netflix well guess what your life's not going to change yeah financial's not going to change your bank account's going to stay empty if you don't do the things you're supposed to do Absolutely. as a human being and it's so easy and and still we don't see it every yeah. day can you yeah. imagine a world where everybody is very drived and, and and ambition everybody has an ambition to do better and be a better person yeah that's utopia out there. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> that is that is but i mean you look look at you you surround yourself You're getting close to, in naples to oh yeah you, naples naples place. is the place i love naples yeah. why well, choose i i believe in that as you said nicole the the time is the most expensive currency that you can you know you can never get you can never turn you can never go back in time and, and try, try to change something so i'm very careful who i spend my time with yes very 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 careful, careful. Yeah. Very careful. and yeah. uh, that's one thing that's very hard to do but it's it's also very uh, rewarding if you learn how to do it yeah you just just say no to things that yeah i wanted to ask you as somebody who's also in a service-based business mm-hmm. having hard conversations is like the, the, I, I can imagine especially when you're talking about millions of dollars in portfolios conversations can get tough and there, there's always mm-hmm. um conflict that you you have to go through what have you learned over the years of having really hard conversations and how do you manage that um kind of especially when the unexpected thing happens or you know stuff out of, outside of your control be much more proactive before things happen yeah in in, in a sense of hey if i have to sit down with the client in you know and i'm just using like you know examples like 2021 when it was a bad it was a bad year right um, if I'm sitting down with the client in 2001 at the end of the year, knowing, seeing how things are going along and comedy wise, inflation wise, business issue wise, right? All this stuff, like, I don't want to wait until the end of the year to sit down with him. Like, I want to, I want to be, I want to prep him or her way before of what is what we're talking about, like. how are the numbers looking into it's not looking, you know, good. And they're telling me the same thing, you know, my business is not looking good, right? So we don't want to wait until the end and then have a meeting because it, it becomes a very big emotional 
mm. you know, roller coaster ride with everybody, mm. you know, with the clients and with, with ourselves. So, so be much more proactive telling them, hey, this is what's going on. I know that we're going to meet in May. You know, I know we meet in June because I like to meet half, you know, half time. You know, I have some clients that I meet quarterly and I have some clients that I meet half time, you know, uh, you know right. semi-annually. And then I meet some sorry, from annually, right? And I really, we, we all, I always give them the option, like, how, how much do you want me to reach out to you? Like, I don't want to bother you. I know yeah. you have a successful, you know, career and traveling and spending time with the family. Like, I'm not going to, I don't want to call you every single week, right? You let me know. And then they tell me, right? So if I'm talking with that client, let's say semi-annually, annually, those conversations, like, I'm not waiting for, you know, June to come so I can now bring him with all these Problem. stuff and information and what's going on to, to shock him. Mm. I'm already talking to him, you know, every, every like couple of months yeah. before that, telling him, hey, this Prep is him. what's going on. So it, it's, it's a much proactive, you need to be much more proactive. You can't wait and ignore issues. I think it's a big issue is any, any professional, any professional, like don't ignore the issue, mm. like tackle it right away. I think Andy Frizzella said it in the first yeah. thing, like when you make that list in the morning and I know you list them, he's like, like do the things that you hate, you hate most first, yeah. like because they're just going to grow and they become these gremlins and they're going to hunt you. And then when, when, when things really bad happen, it's going to destroy you. Right. Mm. So that's, that's what it is. It's like, if you need to, if you see that some stuff is going bad, if you see that, you know, their business owners and the business is going tough, like I'm always reaching out to them. Right. I'm, I just reached out to, to a client of mine over the phone and I was like, you know, like, and he's saying, he's telling me, oh, I'm supposed to close this deal mm -hmm. and it's supposed to happen in March. And there's three partners. Let me give you an example. And I was like, that's great. And I was like, listen, for your second partner, third partner, like you need to get him, you know, uh, ready. He needs to do this. He needs to do that now. Like, don't wait for March. Mm -hmm. Because what if March you don't close? What if you don't close in March? Now you have to start from scratch. So your third partner will, will, will have your back in case that the March closing doesn't happen for this transaction, right? So he was like, yeah, wow. You know, like preparing, yeah, like yeah. preparing, yeah. Him. preparing him. Because, yeah. But he was like, but I'm going to close. I'm like, I get it. I, yeah. I, and I want you to close. But what if March doesn't happen and now we're into summer, yeah. you know, wh what's going to happen? Then you have to start fresh. So you're going to lose another three months before you close again, right? So start now doing this stuff doing the legwork now and, and and then you'll be less surprised and then you know emotions will be much different um and honesty you got to be honest mm -hmm. you know any work that you do yeah. you know you got to be honest you know like blaze you know blaze is a huge real estate guy like i trust his expertise like like if, if i'm doing a transaction with blaze and if i'm if i'm buying real estate like i'm not gonna doubt his um you know his experience and his his knowledge i'm just gonna tell him like like flat out, like, tell me what would you do? Would you do this, right? Would you, would, would, would you do this this way or not? You know, what do you think? Is this a good thing? Is this not, right? And so I'm laying the groundwork so that, you know, it's yeah. much easier for me to, to, to do that, right? So that's where it comes, like, being honest. Like, Blaze will be honest to me. I know I'll be honest, and I'm honest to all my clients. You know, I, I tell them, like, listen, this is, I'm being honest with you. If we do this, this is what's gonna happen. If you do that, this is what's gonna when happen. When you tell right? the truth, when you tell you, the truth, you, you never have, you don't have to remember what you said. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So then it's you're like just a, oh. free spirit. You're, but, oh. you're honesty is the honesty, quality. right? Yeah. Honesty, right? Honesty. Um, I mean, you know, it's like imagine Blaze doesn't own any real estate, but he's selling real estate. <laughs> <laughs> like how how would that you yeah. know like? And, and I look at that myself for myself, right? How can I like, advise? An how can investor you advise? If I'm not investor myself. <laughs> exactly, yeah. right? Like, how can I advise uh, some of my clients to do something if I don't do that? Yep. Right? So, you know, you can't lie. You can't lie and you can't, there's no, there's no shortcuts around that. And just be, you, you got to be proactive with your clients. You got to be I very, very yeah. proactive and, and always, always reach out to them always. And it's hard, you know, like we have over 40,000 clients in our firm. <laughs> so our firm, we have close to 350 advisors, you know, nationwide firm. Uh, and we have over 40,000 clients. So you can imagine how difficult it is. Now, you know, and, you know, sometimes I slip as well. Like, I forget to call this guy, but, if, you know, I forget, but then, you know, I get, you got to make it up. Like, I can't ignore it. Mm. Just because I didn't tell him happy birthday and his birthday was yesterday, like, I need to call and apologize yeah. and tell him, I'm sorry, 
I was traveling or whatnot. I, I saw that it was your birthday. I hope you got the card. I know it was yesterday, but happy birthday, right? But if I wait a week, and I love your card. You <laughs> always send, he always sends me cards for like Christmas and you know, and I love it's old thanks, school, but thanks. I love it. That's yeah. People don't it's, do it's, that it's, nowadays. It's, it's, but tell me, I know you're a hard man to find, and you have your own uh, circle of clientele that you focus on. It's normal at mm -hmm. your your level of business. Uh, how can younger generation kids out there, how can they reach, can they reach out to you or can they reach out to the company or they can talk to a younger advisor who can help them with, you know, sometimes I think kids in their 20s, uh, and if, even if they have like 5000 or $10,000 on yeah. the side, they don't think it's enough and they're afraid. And at least I, that's how I felt when I was in my 20s. I had some money on the side, but I was afraid to reach out to a financial advisor yeah. because in my head i was like wow financial advisor i need to have millions and, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah 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 and it's not true no it's absolutely and not it, it's not the case it's and, absolutely and not that's true. why if somebody's you know who, our listeners out there like how can they reach out to a professional individual like yourself or your team and your company yeah. so they can help them into invest some money absolutely. maybe open a life insurance or yeah, yeah. you know just a full portfolio uh i mean i think you know every time i do a uh a first time meeting with somebody right because I, I have my team we have a lot of people that that bring on clients or you know, potential clients that i speak to and i never met them before mm -hmm. so the first thing i always ask them is have you have you looked us up online have you done research on us right i'm just curious just i want to I'm, i'm just curious from from that perspective and a lot of times they say no i haven't and then i know okay and then i have to kind of explain to them about us and about everything Uh, but everything is really, we, we really emphasize a lot of, of our brand recognition. So there's a lot of stuff on Westpac. There's a lot so of Westpac.com or what's the uh, Westpac wealth, wealth. Westpac wealth .com. Com, okay. uh, and you know, we, through the years you can see that. And the reason why I ask them to see the website is because we, we were recognized as a firm a lot by a lot of very big organizations like fortune magazine, Inc. magazine ranked us fortune magazine, ranked us best top places to work in the country. Inc. magazine ranked us top. Uh, most diversified advice, wealth management firm in the country. You were awarded yeah. something a month or two months ago. Yes, I was uh, Forbes uh, ranked 53rd in the state for Florida. Yeah, amazing. Forbes yeah. Thank great. you, That's thank great. you, Seth. Um, of course, you know my partner's like, you know, we gotta we gotta get you the 25th now. Yeah, <laughs> like, oh of course. I'm like, listen, <laughs> Eastern European guy coming to Florida ranked 53rd. I'll take hey, it. I'll hey, take hey, it any day. I love it. Man. Uh, but thank you, thank you for that. Uh, so yeah, the, so there's stuff about us online. So I think you, whoever man. wants to reach out to anybody, not just us, but anybody, do the research on that firm. Do the research on you know what do they do? You know what? I was not an easy their, client. I mean, I asked. I mean, nobody asks a lot of questions. Hey, nobody's right? easy client. Nobody, and it's great. I was like, these guys want to kill me. I'm asking all these questions. No, no, no. I was warning too, and if he, if there's no answers, I'm not gonna trust, right? I mean, yeah. So, and I, I always like, I will never recommend somebody if I don't use or work with that. Mm -hmm. so I will yeah. never recommend. When I recommend somebody, I know that's gonna be a goal. Mm -hmm. I know once I say to any of my clients and friends, this guy, that's <laughs> it. I know the expectations are. Yeah. always higher than what people think and that's yeah, yeah. that's that's how we are growing and that's how we started the balkan business conference absolutely absolutely it's a great 100 grinders hardworking people that's right good people givers and that's it's right. it's the culture we're creating what we believe in absolutely and you know going go back to that thing like the starting of it i, I would never discriminate against anybody yeah. really like it just yeah. and i'll tell you why i'll tell you why because you guys are young so so when i moved to miami i was playing soccer with this group of guys All Eastern European guys. Can you play soccer that tall? Yeah, defense. <laughs> always, yeah. always defense. You know? Five times. Well, they, <laughs> defense. <laughs> they, they only call me because defense. I can't score. Yeah. Okay. So, like anybody that hears this, like if you want to call me for soccer, like just you know, count on me to to, to and fight. And hide your hands so you don't t touch the 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 the, 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 yeah, the, the ball the because ball, of basketball. Right? Because yeah. basketball. I, you know, I got long legs. I can like you know <laughs> cut past. But uh, so it was so funny. Like I started in the business and. And these guys were playing soccer, and and you know, and one of the one of his our friends, uh, uh, Dushan, uh, he was like, he was I was playing soccer with him, a real good friend of mine. And, Love Dushan. And he started, you know, by himself. Very smart guy. By very the smart way. guy. Yeah. Right. So he started with uh, with one truck. I'm, I'm saying trucks because it, yeah. it was like there's a lot of Balkans with the, with the truck. He started with one truck, and and you know, and I was talking to him back then about like savings and mm -hmm. and doing stuff, and then. And he was like, yeah, this is, this sounds great. And let's save, you know, X amount, like something's very small, nothing big. Now this person is a very successful person. 
super successful. Right? Yeah. So imagine back then if I came to him and tell him, oh, you have $5,000 or, or $1,000. I don't want to take you. That's too small of an account. Right? It, like now he's not just a friend. He's a great client. He's a great of yours client. Too, a great yeah. friend, right? And it's like, and it's like, you know, it's like insane, right? Of how much somebody just kind of, you know, brush somebody off because mm -hmm. of something, right? Because like, yeah. oh, I don't fit. And in my industry, that happens a lot. You know, it happens like, oh, we only work with, you know, multi, multi million yeah. dollar clients, or we only work with this, we only work with that. It's like, and really in our firm, because we're an immigrant, you know, we're, we're immigrants, you know, we came here, especially my partner, Nash, who, who did this whole thing by himself, had this huge vision by himself to grow this company. Uh, you know, he told me like, there's no, we're not discriminating against anybody. If you don't know who's the next lottery pick, mm -hmm. you don't know who's the next, next, you know, Tesla guy, mm -hmm. you know, and imagine you run into that person and, and you say and, no to and them, you say no to I'm them. I'm not going to take your but thousand it happens, dollars. right? Remember yeah. how many stories we hear from successful people? They said, oh, I went to so-and-so and they yeah. said, no, we're going to like pass on you. And then he went and he went, he went again. And then, you know, the 10th person said, okay, I'll risk my money with you. Like, let's go, let's do this company. And this company is now like, whatever, like, you know some big company successful. So you hear that, right? And all these other guys are now, you know, going crazy. Like, how did we miss this opportunity, right? This guy was like not making any any sense, but now look at him. So I, I, I you have to you have to help everybody. It doesn't matter. And I think the same thing with Blaze. Like, you know, if yeah. you have a young kid, successful kid, hey, I want to buy a small unit. Hey, listen, of course, I'm going to educate you. I'm going to put you in the right direction. I'll put you with my team. You know, I might not be able to to hold your hand the whole time, but you know, like I'll, I'm gonna help You'll be you surprised out. Be help you five out. years, how many things can change for individual? Like oh my god! Guy who is oh buying hundred thousand dollar account in five years can be a ten million dollar buyer. Yeah. Never underestimate. Never underestimate. Never, 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 yeah. never, never, never. So that's the hard part about twenty year olds because they have not seen enough business. Like myself personally, like we have not been through enough years of business to watch how quickly somebody can rise to the top and like yep. ascend in that way and so most people are short-sighted when they think about that they're like either you're in my buy box or i don't even want to think about you talk to you see you they only see kind of those transactions and then they end up yeah. kicking themselves i think it's line. an age thing that you have to trust first you have to trust people and you have to understand that somebody who is older and done it already mm -hmm. you gotta become even if you're not you have to become a learner mm -hmm. a lot of people if, the, if you if you're not a learner then you can be surrounded by the smartest people in the room and you're still going to stay dumb mm -hmm. just because you're not a learner. And yeah. uh, it's very important. Take notes, learn, understand, mm -hmm. ask the right question, respect everybody's time. Respect and drop your ego. Drop you got to drop, drop your ego. Your ego. You got to drop it. If you want to yeah. learn, you got to drop your ego. Yeah. I mean, you I know, love this. You're like in, in anything, in sports, like why, you know, you always question like, why do I do this this way? Don't question. Just, you know, he's the expert. Yeah. He's just like, you know, drop the ego. Believe like, it, trust, and, and move forward. Yeah. You know, like, I always talk about this with, with, with friends and clients. I was like, you know, like, look at, like, a, a country like United Emirates or, like, Dubai. Like, there's been a lot of, I don't know if you guys, the younger generation, like, all, all the stuff that's going on in Dubai. And then everybody's saying, like, Dubai has the best of this, the best of that, the best of that. And I, and I ask them, like, you know, why do you think that is? Out of all the cities in the world... We have this now city that has the best this, the best that you can. You can ski in the desert. You know, you can like, you know, it's these true. huge like restaurants are there. Everybody's there. All the restaurants are they there. They have abundance of Yeah. And I, I was like, why? He's like, he's like, listen, not not because they're wealthy. He's like, they dropped their ego. And I spoke with some very influential people from over there, investors that are doing developments and doing stuff with them. And they're like, you know, they never question. Hmm. Like those, like those guys over there. Like they never questioned me. They said, listen, we know that you're the best at what you do. We wanted like this and we wanted the best. So I don't care. I'm not going to question you. I'm not going to change anything. How you do it. You're here because you're the best and you bring that expertise. So, and there is no second chance too. if you mess it up, if you mess it up, exactly. Next exactly. Time. Right. Yeah. But see how their ego, like these, you're talking about these extremely wealthy people how their egos just drop trillionaires to say yeah, like yeah listen it's in your hands like you do it right you do it the way you do it because i i like i'm not going to question it and you know that's why that's how, that's why they're successful you know it's respecting the other person's trait and um you know dropping the ego to learn to learn well, because you gotta you really gotta you gotta be open to learn you know? that's a learn. that's such a team sport um mindset uh, it really like i think there's so 
much to team sports that allow us to really see things from a different perspective because we knew when like I played football mm-hmm. 11 other people in the like in on the field in, in a certain I'm like one of one eleventh piece of this thing being successful and the more you realize that and the more you understand masterminding and putting your brains together the more you understand that we are we are so limited as human beings as just single human beings we're much better when we're surrounded and we're protected with more ideas more thought processes more people that have been through more things it's just a lot of people uh younger people specifically short sight that yeah because they want everything is mine it's all mine this is a teamwork too Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, if 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 you didn't believe in this, you wouldn't come. You you know, oh, yeah. you, you're not part of the team. Same with you guys. Same with me. So we all put the effort and time to become here to be here today as a team, mm-hmm. and, yeah. and we create value. So that's goes oh, yeah. back to that learning. Goes back to uh, do what you say you yeah. want to do, and it's very important. Yeah. very important yeah and i learned so much from you you know like it's like every day it's like every day you know we yeah. you know you pick your brain i pick my brain i'll pick your brain you know we're picking each other's brain and and, and taking all that information up and yeah and processing it in exactly and, you know and, and we, we so come... interaction with the right people and, yeah. and learning and sharing yeah yeah um appreciate you man i really do thanks so much for being here very excited uh like we this. you know we, we we always say 30 45 minutes but man, this goes oh, quick. Man, it's it's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. This is amazing. It was powerful. It was very. Yeah. Thank I you for having me. I've been, I've been, I've been. I watched the other ones. And Thank you. A very good job, and and anything I can do to help out. But you guys are, you guys are doing great, and Appreciate it's awesome, it. man. It's awesome. Very educational for the other guests that you have. Thank as you well. for the knowledge as well, and and sharing with everybody out there. Always. We don't charge. We don't ask. You know, we're not asking for any payments or anything. The only thing we're asking for, whoever listens to this podcast, is to share. Yeah, mm-hmm. share with somebody else who's going to learn. Just yeah, share. Absolutely. Be a giver. Just say, "Hey, I just absolutely. you know watch this podcast. I learned something today. I think you should hear it." Absolutely. And, and absolutely. It's a word. I love to share. I love to share. Thank you, brother. We got it. Appreciate you.